Hi everyone, so I finally got my S23. I mean, all the world I've already used it, returned it or sold it, but nevertheless, it is here. And I can finally say it, that this is my dream phone. I think this is the phone I always wanted. I wanted a compact flagship phone that is lightweight and can last me a full day. I know it is a very simple requirement, but it has been a really long time that none of the Android phone was able to like fit into that category. But I think I finally got a phone. It is not an extraordinary phone. If I'm being honest, I didn't even like the camera array when it was leaked. But I know I was going to like it eventually because S22 was one of my favorite looking phone with a great in-hand feel. And all that phone needed is an efficient chip with a great battery life. So yeah, I know on paper this feels like a small upgrade, but for a small phone like this, it is actually a huge upgrade. And now I think it looks beautiful. I got my phone in green color and I think it looks elegant and minimal. It surprisingly matches my Apple Watch Ultra Band. It is slightly more compact than my 14 Pro and it has some curved edges on the phone so it makes it a little bit more comfortable to hold. The lens has its own metal ring to protect the camera and they do not stick out as much. But it still wobbles on a flat surface so you might need to get a case so actually protect it. So with the case I think it's going to be perfectly fine. On front, you have a beautiful 6.1 inch AMOLED display, which is ever so slightly brighter than last year. Samsung makes great display for its flagship, so no complaint here. The HDR looks great and work like it's supposed to. The speakers are also loud and clear. They do lack pace because of this compact size, but I think the quality of the speaker is good. The stereo separation is also good and you can get like 60, 40 uh, sound separation. So even if you cover the bottom speaker, you can still get the sound from the upper speaker. So I think it is a decent speaker for this phone. See, all of those things we really love about Samsung. But there is one thing that Samsung was not able to get right for a really long time and that was the chipset. So either it was Exynos for a long time and if by accident Samsung put a Snapdragon in S22 series, it was made by Samsung itself. So it was not by TSMC and it used to throttle the battery life literally sucked. So I think this year finally Samsung made a great phone with a great chipset so you finally get a tsmc made chipset in this this is snapdragon 8 gen 2 and i think it performs phenomenally even for this compact size and that's what made this a huge upgrade not only in performance but in fluidity efficiency and battery life keep that in mind this is still a compact phone so expecting a lot of power from this phone is going to be a higher expectation so if you're planning to do a lot of gaming it will still get hot but for the day-to-day -day life i think it is performing amazingly so i think kudos to samsung for finally listening to the users and giving us the best chipset you can find on android market right now I know I should have waited for a couple of days to give you the battery life experience but for the first day I really got a great battery life and that gives you a pretty good indication because Android phones over the period of time actually gets better with the learning usage. So out of the box if a phone is giving you a really good battery life I think it is a pretty good indication in my opinion. I got around 5 hours of screen on time with 30% battery left. And it was not just on Wi-Fi, I was also using 5G on this phone and I think the modem is also performing really well. This phone has given me an almost equivalent battery life to my 14 Pro which I think is a great thing to achieve. And even the standby is better than 14 Pro. I only lost 1% overnight as compared to 5-6% to on my 14 Pro. The only downside is going to be the slow charging speed. I mean you still get that 25W wired and 15W wireless charging. I am okay with that because I'm used to slow charging but I think a lot of people might not be okay with that. One other thing that has remained the same as last year is going to be the camera sensors. And that is not a bad thing. Camera hardware on Samsung phone are always great. It is just the processing that is an issue sometimes. Even though ISP is different, photos have been improved a little bit. But I think that overexposed look does make the photos a little bit washed out. The portrait has been improved, the edge detection is good, uh, but the quality of 3x was not as great, especially in the low light scenarios. Selfie camera however upgraded from 10 megapixel to 12 megapixel and I think it is also taking a decent shot. In the video department, now you can record 8k up to 30 frames per second and video is supposed to be improved than the predecessor. But I haven't tested the camera fully so I will do my thorough testing and get back to you. I will also try to compare it with 14 Pro. So if you want a dedicated comparison between both of them, just let me know. 
But apart from that, every basic thing on a phone like call quality, Wi-Fi 6 speed, 5G speed, and even the spend by on the 5G is actually really good. Uh, I really don't have anything to complain here about this phone. Some people might not like the haptic feedback because they didn't like on S22 as well. But for me, I actually like light feedback. I just want like subtle uh, feedback. So I think for me, it's fine. But I think they are not as great as Pixel and iPhone. But I think it is a great overall package if you do not want the best camera phone in the world or best battery life. If you just want a compact flagship phone that does everything better even if it's not exceptional, I think this is a really great phone and I think Samsung has nailed it this time. But see, these are my early impressions. They might change in the future. Uh, I am in the honeymoon phase right now. Maybe it can change by the time I do my review. So if you can wait before purchasing this phone, I would suggest it. For pre-order, I think the only great thing about this phone is going to be that you can get that 256 GB and that will come with UFS 4.0 and that will actually change the experience of this phone. I would not recommend getting the 128 GB because that will come with UFS 3.1. And yes, the difference is there. So uh, if you cannot wait, I'd say go for it. I think it's going to be fine. But if you can wait for the review and can spend a little bit extra after that, I would suggest that. Let me know if you want to know anything about this phone. You can actually follow me on Twitter for the daily updates. I usually post my battery life and the experience of my phone every day on Twitter. But if you have any other question you want to ask in the comment box, please do it. My name is Rohit. I'll see you the next one. Till then. Bye.